I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that the word of God will impact our lives Amen. and will refresh our lives. Amen. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you know that there are many Psalms we have looked at. Uh, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, and 78. But what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to pick one verse in Psalm 74. Because we need it so very much. Once that verse is settled, all the other parts of our lives and ministry will be settled in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time and bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because your word is still fresh and your word is still having all that you have put into it. And we pray, O oh Lord, you lift your people above all the situations, circumstances, and problems of life in Jesus' name. Impact every life tonight and Lord so energize us and so empower us and so lift us up we'll march forward never looking back and we'll lift other people in Jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus mighty name we pray we're looking at Psalm 74 and we're reading from verse 9 Psalm 74 reading from verse 9 we see not our signs and there is no more any prophet neither is there among us any that knoweth how long here was the cry of the psalmist here was the passion of the psalmist here was the observation of the psalmist he said we see not our signs as you look at all the Psalms and you think about prosperity for the children of God and you also see victory and triumph for the people of God as individuals and families and as a nation. That was a sign among the people of God. The miracle, the provision, the water out of the rock and the manna out of heaven and all their needs met when they had the signs, supernatural signs among them. If there's any complaint at all, and if there is any sorrow at all, if there's any affliction at all, if there is any incurable disease, and if there is any oppression of the enemy upon the children of Israel, and all that you read in the Psalms of their complaint and also of their tears, of their sorrow, of the pressure and everything, everything culminates in this, we we'll see not our signs. And then it says, and there is no more any prophet. The psalmist is looking back to the time when there was a prophet, one prophet in the whole nation, Moses, one prophet in the whole nation, Elijah, one prophet in the whole nation, and that's uh, Elisha. And you think about the time that they lived. They said, if the prophet will just appear, it doesn't matter the economy, it doesn't matter the oppression, it doesn't matter the powers that be oppressing them all they needed was to see a prophet in the land all these problems were reading about in the Psalms everything would have finished and now it says and neither is there any of us that knoweth how long how long we're going to be in this situation no sign no supernatural no wonders and then no prophet that's why tonight we're looking at the message desiring the signs of god's choosing people when god chose them he gave them a sign he called moses and where moses was god gave him a sign he said you're going to a difficult hard-hearted king pharaoh he will not listen to you but the signs will break him down and the signs will devastate egypt and the signs will like bridge the people of god and the signs will provide all the needs of the people he gave him the sign and when god called elijah 
you know, the signs for the whole nation that even though Ahab was terrible and wicked, yet that man with the sign of the prophet was able to have a breakthrough for the whole nation. We can go one by one to all the prophets. All we need is to see our signs again and then to see the mark and the demonstration of the prophetic ministry again all problems will be solved all tears will be wiped away and sorrow will vanish away and then we will live again in the good old days of the supernatural taking place everywhere it will get to your turn it will get to everyone's turn and then all the regrets and all the sorrow and all the timidity and all the fear and all the cowering and everything, everything will vanish. Even from tonight in your life, they'll vanish in Jesus' name. There are three points we're looking at. Number one, the past signs among God's purchased people. He purchased the children of Israel. He bought them from captivity and brought them unto himself. And from that moment on, as they stepped out, look at the pillar of fire and look at the pillar of cloud. As they stepped out, look at the dividing of the Red Sea. As they stepped out, look at the manna coming every day. Look at the Shekinah glory in their temple. And look at the joy they had. And Malachites came, they finished them. And all the kings of Og and Bishan, they stood in faith because they had signs. That's why the psalmist was saying in the past, we saw the signs among God's purchased people. What are the signs? Number two now, the predicted signs through gleam perverted prophets. When the people of God don't have any sign, when there's no prophet, prophetic ministry among the people of God, then godless people will rise up. The magicians of Egypt will rise up. Balaam's will rise up. And all those false prophets of Baal, they will rise up and they will be showing some pseudo signs. The people will say, after all, the people did that say, their children of God, their people of God, there is no sign. But look at this one. They are demonstrating something. Everything is going to turn around. All those magicians of Egypt and all those astrologers of, uh, of Babylon, they're going to be put to shame even before you in Jesus' name. Your signs will come back. The supernatural will come back. The good old days will come back. And tell you will feel you are starting ministry afresh again. And if you have been tired and then you are weak and you are almost turning back, you are saying, Oh Lord, give me a place to stand. I will move my community. It is coming. For me, it is coming. It will come in Jesus' name. Number three is the promise to supernatural for purified godly people the promise supernatural for godly purified people let's come to point number one in point number one we're reading from psalm 74 again reading from verse 9 and look at the two things there number one the signs number two the prophet we see not our signs there is no more any prophet Neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. As the psalmist looked back at the history of the children of Israel, he said, we have always been people with the supernatural sign. In fact, as to start from the time of Abraham, even before Moses, you look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 20, and we're looking at verse, uh, verse 7. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 7, it tells us about Abraham, and look at what God said about Abraham. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. And the man uh, 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 said, are you going to destroy the whole nation? I didn't know. I took his wife because I thought he was, she was a uh, sister are you going to destroy me my family and the whole nation and God said now therefore restore the man his wife for he is a prophet 
for he is a prophet the father of the nation of israel abraham he is a prophet and then it says he shall pray for thee for thou and thou shalt live it says when the prophet appears the death penalty that had been on you as the king as the emperor as the ruler all that death penalty will vanish away because of the presence of the sign of a prophet look at verse 17 in verse 17 of that same chapter it tells us about what abraham did and as abraham prayed for him it says so abraham the prophet abraham prayed unto god and god healed abimelech the ruler and his wife and his uh, maid servant and the bear children that's why the, the psalmist as he looked back to the history of the children of israel said where are the signs we see not our signs and then he says and there is neither a prophet as well and we do not know how long this will continue Hosea chapter 12 we're reading from verse 10 Hosea chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 10 I have also spoken by the prophets that's God saying look at your history and look at the past I have spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets the children of Israel in their past history they had the ministry of the prophets look at this look at verse 13 very important verse 13 in verse 13 by a prophet the, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt it wasn't by an orator the man was a stammerer it wasn't by um, you know popularity or whatever the man was a shepherd behind uh, the scene and he was even far away but God located him the Lord will locate you wherever you are you are located already in Jesus name and he made him a prophet and look at this it says by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet he was preserved by a prophet they came out their conversion by a prophet they came out their redemption by the prophet they came out separation from egypt and they were preserved in the wilderness they were preserved when they crossed over river jordan they were preserved when they got to canaan and as you look at their history it was the ministry of the prophet and it says they were preserved by the ministry of the prophet let's look at just a few of them we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 34 in deuteronomy chapter 34 we're reading from verse 10 deuteronomy chapter 34 reading from verse 10 and there arose not a prophet since in israel like unto moses there arose not a prophet in the land of israel since that time he died like unto moses whom the lord knew face to face but why that because moses himself had said unto joshua he says he said are you jealous of me that you are defending me as if i would be the only prophet in the land he said oh that all the people of god were prophets and the spirit of god will abide in them that was his desire but the people just carried on religion as usual and then tradition as usual were children of abraham and because of that they had no passion they had no pursuit they had no desire and they were not consecrating wanting to meet up the challenge of the day and so it says because of that since there was a no passion or consecration to become what god would have made of them there arose not a prophet since in israel like unto moses whom the lord knew face to face look at verse 11 in verse 11 
what it says in all the signs in all the signs you know as moses appeared before pharaoh for the very first time and pharaoh said what sign are you showing that you say god has sent you and you're saying let my people go and then the signs the lord had given him he threw the rod down and he became serpent he picked it up again and pharaoh said that's nothing and pharaoh called the magicians and they threw their rods down by their enchantment they became serpents and then the serpent coming from the rod of moses swallowed up all those serpents and they lost their power the time is coming the time has arrived Amen. all those people that are trying to counterfeit and they're trying to duplicate the real sign of the church of the living god all their powers will be swallowed up in jesus name Amen. and then moses just pointed the rod to all their rivers all the rivers became blown and they had nothing to drink and they knew this is the hand of god eventually the magicians told pharaoh and they said let these people go let this man go because this is the finger of god that's what he's saying about the sign and about the prophet before the children of israel in all the signs and the wonders which the lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and then in verse 12 look at verse 12 and in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel if that could happen again with any church and with any group of believers that the signs and the supernatural will come again so we're no more crying we see not our signs neither is there any prophet in the land and we do not know no man knows how long that will be if the Lord will bring back the days of power and the days of signs and wonders all the problems that people are battling with everything will vanish away in Jesus name and you remember when Elijah came on the scene when prophets arrive they arrive so that they can restore the nation back to God the whole of the children of Israel they had gone away from the Lord and they were now serving bear the whole nation and there was a no visible sign of a prophet of a real man of God and then Elijah appeared in first Kings chapter 17 and it says Elijah the Tishbite when he appeared he said hear the word of the Lord there'll be no dew or rain all these years according to my word one single man in the whole nation he locked up heaven and the whole nation did not have rain eventually you know the story when he got to the widow's house how the Lord multiplied the meal over there and then when the child died the signs of the prophet he prayed and then the child they rose up whether in his personal life at the brook chariot or it is in the family taking care of him the signs were there all the time and supernatural power was manifested anywhere he was if that sign could come back in your life if the supernatural could come back in your life evangelism will be easier and then the power of god will be moving everywhere they say that's a problem that that's a problem there you will bring solution to all those problems in jesus name eventually he came and then he told that the nation after he had said he have to gather all the people together he said why are you halting between two opinions if god be god serve him if Baal serve him and the people could not say anything at all and then he said all right you have many prophets of Baal. let them take their bullock and let them prepare the altar and let them pray to their god the god that brings fire from heaven he will be the god and the people said that's right that's what we're going to do they tried they tried they tried they failed they'll fail before elijah if another elijah could rise up today in your community in your local church and since the promise of God is for everyone, my brother, why not you? My sister, why not you? Eventually, after they failed, like they are going to fail before you. 
then Elijah said, oh, you uh, come aside. Let's read that together. We're looking at Post Kings chapter, chapter 18, and we're reading from verse 36. In First Kings chapter 18, verse 36, now he came and he challenged them, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet, understand that, Elijah the prophet, if the prophet is there, and if he's a prophet of God and the man of God, the sign of the people of God, purchased people of God, the sign must be there. It says, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things according to your word at thy word. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, it says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou has turned their heart back again. Remember, is asking for the conversion and the restoration of the whole nation. Not just of one person, not just of one family, and it is a sign. It's the supernatural that will get that to happen. And then in verse 38, we're told, then the fire of the Lord fell, and the fire of God will fall and the power of God will fall and consume the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the doors and leaked up the water that was in the trench. Look at the results and look at the consequence once the prophet arrives and once the signs, the supernatural, once they're there in verse 39 and when all the people saw it, that's the whole nation, when all the people saw it from every tribe, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord is God and the Lord, the Lord is God. They turned from idolatry, they turned from their iniquity, they turned from their doubts and unbelief and they turned unto the Lord when the sign appears that's why we're passionate and that's why we're desiring we see the signs of the past and we're saying where are the signs today and then we have read about it. that's elijah you remember the man that followed elijah that's the man that said he wanted a double portion of the spirit there are other people sons of the prophets in the land but what did they care about the signs? What did they know about the signs? And they, they, you know, they were in the school of a prophet. But they didn't have the passion and they didn't have the pursuit of wanting the signs of the prophets to be upon them. But this man, Elisha, he kept on following. And then Elijah said, What do you want that I should do unto you before I be taken away from you? And he said, All I'm asking for, and the reason I'm following you intimately, and the reason I'm not looking back, is that I want a double portion of your power. Double portion. Somebody shout, Double portion. It will come in Jesus' name. And then eventually he saw him going up and he said, my father, my father, and the chariot of Israel. And then he took his own mantle and he tore his mantle and then he took the mantle, mantle that fell from Elijah. He got to Jordan and he said, where is he? The God of Elijah. And when he smote that river, he parted into two. And even the people that saw, they said the power and the spirit of Elijah Elijah has come upon Elisha, like the Spirit will come upon you. Power will come upon your life. And then all your cold and all the spiritual fever, spiritual malaria, and the spiritual shivering that you are covering yourself, you are hiding yourself, everything from tonight will vanish away. Power will come. Authority will come. 
and the signs will come. And that man, Elijah, Elisha, they played the first place he got to was Jericho. And the people said the land is good, but the water is not because the people were dying. He said, bring me a cruise of it. He cruise and then he put salt there and put it at the fountain there and the river and the water helping and feeding the whole of that community. Everything was healed. And then as it went on, there were people that there were kings that were fighting against the king of Israel. And then they went to him and said, look at this. There's no water to drink. He said, dig ditches. And as they did that, water came supernaturally. Supernatural provision is coming. It's coming upon your life. And it's coming upon your family. And you remember that uh, somebody that had debts they could not pay and they wanted to take the children. Then the woman came to Elijah, Elisha, and, and he said, what do you have at home? He said, nothing except just a little oil. He said, go borrow vessels, not a few. Poverty is going to vanish away. All this economic crunch, uh, uh, recession, it will vanish away in Jesus' name. Let a prophet appear and let the signs of the prophet, let the signs come. All this says, I don't have enough to eat. I cannot pay my house rent. I cannot do this. Something will happen. And then she borrowed all the vessels and she poured and she poured. And then we're told when all the vessels have been filled, all the vessels in your house, when they have been filled, all the vessels in your family, when they, are, when they have been filled, everything stopped. And then she went to the man of God and said, look at what had happened. And uh, the Elisha said, now you go and sell some of that and pay your debt. You will pay your debt and then live up the rest and then the child of that woman died and then elisha was told he went there and power came that child got up premature death will be cancelled and all the things who have been suffering this one is sick that one is down that one is in the hospital that one they say the doctor said they don't know what to do again the prophet will know what to do the power and the signs will come and all the spirit of premature death will be driven away from our church in jesus name and then uh, Naaman came for a faraway country from the enemy country. And uh, Elisha did not have to come out, did not have to, you know, do anything. Uh, read my role and uh, rolling on the ground. He said, go tell him to wash in Jordan seven times and his flesh will come back again. Uh, you know the story, the man first of all got angry. I thought he will come out and he will put his sand in the place and recover me of the leprosy. But then eventually the servant said don't talk like that what if this man had told you to do something higher something greater would you not have done that and eventually accepted he went to river jordan in in obedience to the word of the man that had signs of the supernatural when he did it for the seventh time the flesh came back again your flesh will come back again your health will come back again and your energy will come back again in Jesus name and then Gehazi his servant said look at my master look at cheap money that came in but Elisha will not take any amount and then he sneaked out and went to Naaman and said you know my servant my master just has some visitors now and we don't need more just two changes of raiment and this and that and then they packed everything and gave him and then he entered in and you know was doing service and Elisha said, Gehazi, yes, here I am. Where have you been? Nowhere. I've been here all the time. And he said, did not my spirit go with you when you went to that man? And then this is what you did and that's what you did. Word of knowledge. Everything came out very well. And then the power of miracles, signs and wonders, the leprosy of Naaman come upon you. And then you understand, Elisha? Uh, Syria was waging war against uh, the people of God and Elisha in his own room. I pray the signs will come. I pray the signs will be upon your life. It will be upon your family. 
an enemy will never surprise you to destroy any of your children, any of your family members in Jesus' name. And then Elisha said, go tell the king, the king of Israel is uh, planning uh, to come uh, and destroy you. That's why he's saying, uh, eventually the king of Israel became concerned and said, who is the spy here? Who is going to tell the king of Israel that this is happening? This is what we are planning. Let me read the answer to you in 2 Kings. We're looking at uh, chapter 6. 2 Kings, looking at uh, chapter 6 there. And you will see what is said. 2 Kings, now chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 11. In 2 Kings, chapter 6, reading from verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled the signs will trouble them the signs will perplex them his heart was so troubled uh, for this sin and he called his servants and said unto them will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says and one of the servants said none my lord O king but Elisha the prophet Elisha the prophet remember we see not our signs neither is there any prophet and we do not know how long this will be but a prophet will appear the power of God will appear. And so, the, uh, Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, he telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. You know the story. And he said, if that is so, I'll get rid of him. They cannot get rid of you. Their powers cannot destroy you. You will finish your assignment, and when you finish, if you even want extra time, you say, Lord, I've done this, but there's too much field that there's still to be covered. I want extra year. Where are you? You'll get it in Jesus' name. And then uh, eventually he said, and then early in the morning, the servant of Elisha woke up and said, my father, what are we going to do? Because of all those chariots, they thought they will capture Elisha, they will not capture you. They thought they will destroy him and all that knowledge and all that revelation, everything will go. No, it will not go because this man having the double portion of the Spirit of God is here to do something. You will do something. And then Elisha, Elisha said unto his servant, Fear not, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And then those people came, they wanted to catch Elisha, the prophet, the man of God. And the man of God did not hide somewhere. They are coming, they are coming. We cannot go out anymore. We cannot do evangelism anymore. He came out and he said, who are you looking for? They said they're looking for Elisha, the prophet. I'll take you to the person you really want to see. Because he had prayed, God blindfolded them. And they were blind. They were looking, they were seeing, but they could not perceive. They will not see you. They will not detect you. And then he led them to the king of Israel. When the king of Israel saw them, look at mighty chariot. My father, my father, should I kill them? How will you kill the people that you have got like this? Give them food. Let them go back to their master. Those people, they came back. They, they went back. They had a lot of story to tell. They said, that man is indestructible. I'm talking about you. I said, that man is indestructible. That woman is indestructible. The point is that the psalmist looked at their history in the past and he said any time there was a God-appointed prophet, well, well, we saw the sign and then there was, there was no trouble anymore. That's point number one, the past signs among God's purchased people. Let's look at point number two now. When the people of God, when they do not have the signs, 
some other people will rise up the magicians of egypt and the astrologers of uh, of babylon they will rise up and they'll be deceiving the people and uh, look at um, and look at uh, this uh, deuteronomy chapter 13 in deuteronomy chapter 13 uh, we're reading from verse 1 deuteronomy chapter 13 uh, reading from verse 1 uh, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give thee a sign or a wonder when the true prophets are not there when the true signs are not there when the true supernatural power of god when the real baptism in the holy ghost is not there then some other uh, pseudo signs will come and then they will say they have a dream they will not deceive you they will not deceive me look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 on and the sign and the wonder come to pass where whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods that's always the uh, the, the, the purpose of those who have the false sign and the false prophets let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them they were told in verse 3 it says thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet that was easy at the time of Moses since the signs were available the power was available water coming out of the rock and manna coming from heaven and then Joshua on the battlefield and he just lifts up the rock and the Joshua will be defeating all the enemy it will be easy not to follow the false prophet but when there's no sign when there's no prophet, when there's no power, when everything is at a standstill, when prayer is not being answered, when solutions are not coming over people that have problems, and when uh, they, they are oppressed and they are depressed, and you know they are having mental problem, mental derangement, and nobody is able to solve any problem. Well, if the false prophets come, they'll be considering, where do I go? When in your community, when in our church, you know, the people, this one is sick, that one is depressed, that one is uh, going to psychiatric, and that one is, uh, you know, poor, and that one is dying of hunger, and then somebody comes, a false prophet now, and he said, ah, they have doctrine, ah, they have Bible, and they will go from Genesis to Revelation, but there's no power. Power. and they say come over here come for power the people who are not very wise and the people who do not know the edge of going to the false prophet they will go there and if they go there what's going to happen you will be laboring and then the false prophets will stay somewhere and they will be attracting them with this and with that that will stop I said that will stop that's what it says, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you, is examining you, is proving you, is trying you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. In verse 4 it says, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. Ye shall serve him and cleave unto him look at that commandment of the lord uh, if you tell your children and you say if anybody gives you biscuits don't accept if they give you granules don't accept if they give you food don't accept well that's good that's a, that's good commandment from the parent but the children come home and then there's no bread there's nothing to drink and there's no money to even buy anything at all and their clothes are worn and there is no money everything is like that but you're reminding them don't ever get anything from those strangers anybody you don't know don't get anything from them but they're hungry eventually they will go against what we're saying but if there is food at home 
and if there is everything if it's plenty and you tell them the fridge is there anything you need go there and take and then after you have made enough provision and the provisions are there and you now tell them don't take biscuit from stranger don't take this from stranger will they obey Yes, they will obey because there's abundant provision for them. But if we're just giving them commandment, 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 no power, commandment, no provision, commandment, there's no answered prayer, commandment, no sign, commandment, but the supernatural is not there, it will be difficult for them to obey. But things are going to become easier. Easier in your family. Easier in your life. The people will understand that all the provision they will ever need is in the house. And as they come here, and as they come to your local church, as they are stepping in there, and they call the God of the Bible, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the God of deeper life, instantaneously, all their infirmities will vanish away in Jesus' name. Even if the people of the world are jobless, our people will not be jobless. If the people of the world are sick and dying, our people will not be sick and dying in Jesus' name. Power, power evangelism. Power, power, a uh, power, powerful message that is coming to them, and the faith of everyone will rise when they hear that testimony there. That testimony there, when they say that, when they see that a sick pastor prayed and that sickness instantaneously vanished away. I couldn't sleep before, but as the group pastor prayed for me, I slept like a baby. And this was happening to me before as I came to the service, I was not even prayed for. Every bad thing vanished away, and now I have strength, and now I have power. I'm telling you, faith will rise. Your own faith will rise. The faith level of the church will rise in Jesus' name. But if, do, if we don't see our signs, the past signs are no more there at the present hour. All we can hear about is all the people that don't have holiness, that are preaching healing, the power that do not have the signs, the supernatural. They are the people that are talking about signs and wonders. The people that don't have sanctification, they don't have a pure life, a holy life, a righteous life. They don't know about rapture. They don't know about the coming of the Lord. Lord, and they don't emphasize everything the Bible emphasizes. They are the people that are producing backyard miracle. They are producing false miracles. And people be running about. But now the time has come. Our time has come. All the running about will come to an end in Jesus' name. But please understand that there are false signs and wonders outside but the lord is telling us if we will get the real thing all those things that are false they'll just be like the rod of the magicians where we'll swallow them up look at matthew chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 24 matthew chapter 24 we're reading from verse 24 for there shall be false there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders we have the doctrine where are the signs and we have the Bible where are the signs and we have the message where are the signs and we have the life the life of a real believer a righteous life a rapturable life but where are the signs there are false prophets that will do whatever they want to do and then they shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect check up around you those who have been coming to deeper life in those days of great revival of old and then when eventually maybe they had problem and the problems were not solved and they say what am I going to do now they pray and they have some friends to pray together and then they fasted and the problem was still there many of them have gone astray and many of them have gone to that place and that place and that place you see them now 
and you say is the problem now totally solved well they said i'm still waiting on the lord it will come because they're deceiving them and they are telling them everything will be all right everything will be all right they say if you come today and you don't get it today come next time and then they will put a big name on what they are going to do i'm going to talk to you next week on the atomic power of the holy ghost even though the fellow is not getting anything you know he says maybe i'll get it next week because they're going to talk about the atomic power of the holy ghost and then he comes and the man talks about atomic power he doesn't even know the real atomic power of the bomb and he's talking about uh, this other one now and then they pray and do various uh, things and nothing happens he said you know it will come it will come as you are faithful the lord is testing you to see that you are faithful they, they always say something to tie them down and here we are the signs will come back the power will come back and then you're going to do something you will identify all the people who have gone away because they're in search for signs and they're in search of uh, the supernatural and as you write to them you list them in your own group and you list them in your own region and then you write to them and you say come power has come back the good old days have come back and then all they're looking for is for solution and if the solution is there they will come if the power manifestation is there they will come they will leave all those places where they're being deceived and they will come to have the real thing in jesus name as your time come as our time come and look at verse, uh, look at Matthew chapter 7, we're reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, we're reading from verse 21. It says in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The will of God being born again, the will of God living a righteous life the will of God being a new creature in Christ the will of God the life I live now I live by the faith of the Son of God that's the will of God the will of God to go out and reach out and bring them the outsiders into salvation he says only the people that do the will of God they will enter into the kingdom of heaven look at verse 22 in verse 22 many will Will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then Jesus said, Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Your name was never in the book of life. All these people, a miracle, signs, wonders, supernatural, healing, and deliverance come. And then they always have something every week. The signboard is there. The, the posters are there. And yet, with all the pretended prophecies and with all the false signs and wonders, Jesus said, I will tell them, I never knew you. How is it will be losing members to the people where there's no salvation and there was uh, there's no holiness of life but the people are being deceived because we ourselves the bona fide children of god the people that you have the signs and the wonders the signs if they're happening nobody can see that's why they're running to the false people we're going to stop and we're going to close that back door where people are going away from our church in jesus name then when i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work in equity all those people with false signs and false wonders they are walking in equity and jesus said whatever they are doing will not get them to the kingdom of god or kingdom of heaven on the final day but praise the lord you'll get to that kingdom i said you'll get to that kingdom you're born again 
you're sanctified, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're serving the Lord in all sincerity. But now you must have the promised sign and the promise supernatural. And you can become another man, changed and turned to another man in Jesus' name. And you know, the Lord said, Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. There is no promise that any other person has claimed that you cannot claim. Calvary is the same for you and for me and for everyone. Provision is the same for everyone. And if you are wondering, and if you are asking, and if you are pleading, and if you are praying, and if you are tarrying before the Lord, and you are saying, where are the signs and where are the prophets? Oh Lord, I want to be an answer to this prayer. I am praying, God will move in. The power of God will move in. And every weakness in your life, every weakness in your ministry, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at the promise supernatural for purified godly people. The promise supernatural for godly people, purified people, sanctified people. You are a candidate. I said you are a candidate. Mark chapter 16 reading from verse 17 mark chapter 16 we're reading from verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe thank god i'm a believer i say thank god i'm a believer i believe in jesus say that i believe in jesus i believe in all the promises of god I believe God is who, who he says he is. I believe that God is who he says he is. I believe I am who God says I am. I believe. I believe I have what God says I have. I believe. I believe. I can do what God says I can do. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. I believe Jesus is my strength. I believe Jesus is the power of my life. I believe I have Christ. I have power. I have the supernatural. I have the signs. He lives on the inside of me. He that believeth in me, he that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. You are the believer. I said you are the believer. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Do you have the name? That's all you need, that's all you need. In my name shall they cast out devils. No demon will stand before you. No power of darkness will stand before you. They shall speak with new tongues. New tongues, no more a discouraged tongue. And no more saying, I never have anything. I never get anything. When I pray, God does not answer. We have to go to Bagada and then see the GS before I can be healed. Change your language. Change that tongue. New language. I say new language. The language of power. The language of authority. The language of an achiever. The language of a conqueror. You will have in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, they shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. You will not die before your time. The world will not kill you before your time. It says nothing will hurt you. And they shall lay their hands on the sick. They shall lay their hands on the sick. What are those hands who are going to lay on the sick? Your hands be anointed in Jesus' name. You will not die. 
and sick people will not die under your anointed hand in Jesus name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover your wife will recover your husband will recover your children will recover all those neighbors they will recover in Jesus name Look at verse 20, look at verse 20, in verse 20, and they went forth as you are going forth. I said you are going forth, and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I'm your helper, I'm your supporter, I will hold your hand and I will lift you up because you are waiting upon the Lord. I will renew your strength, you will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. And he went with them, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word of your mouth, confirming the word of your message, confirming the word of promise in your mouth will signs following. Shout Amen. Amen. In Luke, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10, we're reading from verse 19. In Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 19, it says, Behold, I give you power. Where is the person there? Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing, nothing from the sea nothing from the sky nothing from the village nothing from the bush nothing from the shine nothing from the paths of darkness nothing shall by any means hurt you the time has come your time has come isaiah chapter 8 we're reading from verse 18 isaiah chapter 8 we're reading from verse 18 it says behold i am the children whom the lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in israel from the lord of hosts which dwelleth in mount zion behold the children where are those children Behold, the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in this land. They are for signs and wonders. I said you are for signs and wonders. Open your mouth wide and the Lord will fill it. He will not withhold any good thing from those that love him and the people that call upon him. This is your time this is your hour the hour of your power and the power of your hour whatever you ask he will give unto you everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him the door is open before you now rise up and say lord here am i here am i i'm one of those children of god i'm one of those servants of god i am for sign i am for wonder in the land of promise you're in the land of promise you're in the church and you can ask the lord where are the signs and where are the prophets open your mouth and let the lord answer you